This is an 8 inch diameter by 8 inch pitch model aircraft propeller. This used to be an 8x8 boat propeller. It is now a 7x8 after the previous owner decided to use it as a depth sounder. If you use the rule of thumb for choosing a propeller size based purely on pitch, RPM and boat speed. Now if this was all that there is to selecting a propeller, then this 8 inch propeller and this 8 inch propeller should provide exactly the same performance if they are used at similar RPM and boat speed. But is that the case? Can you even use an aircraft propeller underwater? And if so, how does its performance compare to that of a normal boat propeller? To answer those questions, I'm going to work through a case study. This is the propeller that I used on my solar kayak, and I know that I was able to achieve 6 knots on 300 watts. I'm going to compare its performance underwater with test delta from a wind tunnel. And then I'm going to compare that to these two marine propellers that were selected from the Wageningen B series. Both these propellers were selected because they can provide the same amount of thrust at that particular boat speed. In the process, I will also then point out how the number of blades and the blade area affect performance. The University of Illinois published wind tunnel test data for a range of model aircraft propellers. The propeller that I used was one of those being tested and I was able to get hold of a table for all the performance coefficients. I won't go into the equations and calculations in this video, I'll leave that for a future video. I used a program called Michlet to calculate the thrust requirement of my kayak at different boat speeds. This is what the curves look like if I plot the wind tunnel test data against advance ratio. Now advance ratio is not a very intuitive variable to work with. It's a function of boat speed, propeller speed and propeller diameter. So the easiest way to make this more intuitive is to assume that your propeller RPM is constant, obviously your diameter is fixed, and then this x-axis simply becomes your boat speed axis. So at zero boat speed you've got maximum thrust coefficient, zero efficiency. And then as boat speed picks up, eventually your propeller would reach a point at which it runs at maximum efficiency, knowing the required thrust at a specific boat speed. I was able to calculate exactly where on these curves my propeller was operating. It happened that the efficiency was just beyond maximum efficiency, and then reading off from the same value of advance ratio, I could get the torque coefficient as well as verifying that the thrust is exactly the required thrust. Now, being able to calculate the torque required at that point and knowing my electric motor's torque versus current required, I'm able to calculate the current required to be 14.8 amps. As it happened, I was monitoring my current at the time and my current draw was only 13.6 amps. And that then brings us to the very important question of applying wind tunnel test data to a prop that is actually running underwater. To understand why I'm allowed to use a thrust coefficient that was obtained from a test done in a wind tunnel and yet calculate the thrust of that same propeller when operating underwater, it's necessary to point out that these coefficients are calculated through something called dimensional analysis. What that means is that the system is characterized and then all the operational variables are separated from other attributes that 
will be assumed to remain constant. So to calculate the thrust, the coefficient becomes one of the variables used in the equation. Other variables are density of the fluid, propeller speed and propeller diameter. Now density is unique to the fluid and the fact that it's been separated out allows you to plug in whatever density you want based on whatever fluid your propeller operates in. When these coefficients were calculated dimensional analysis required a certain group of attributes to remain fixed. These are the following. The pitch to diameter ratio, the expanded area ratio, the number of blades denoted as Z, and the Reynolds numbers. If any of these values change, then that set of coefficients is no longer valid and you need an entire new set of coefficients. These top three values are all specific to the propeller geometry. Reynolds number is a function of both geometry, speed and fluid properties. So just to deal with the air versus water and get that out of way, let me quickly explain how Reynolds number affects propeller performance. Reynolds number itself is a function of a length measurement, a speed measurement and a fluid property which involves density and viscosity. Now with propellers the length measurement is simply the blade cord at 75% of its radius. The speed measurement is the tangential velocity of that cord at that position and then the fluid is simply the density of the fluid divided by the, den the viscosity of that fluid. I know the RPM at which my aircraft propeller was tested in the wind tunnel so I was able to calculate the Reynolds number for that specific test and at 6000 RPM it had a Reynolds number of 80,000. If it was turning at 6000 RPM underwater, the difference in fluid properties would have led to a Reynolds number that is 15 times higher. But at the same time, had I reduced the RPM by 15 times, I would end up with exactly the same Reynolds number even though I'm running in water. So if my propeller was running at 400 RPM, the Reynolds number would be 80,000 that set of coefficients would still apply exactly as is and simply by swapping that density from air to water, in other words a thousand times more, I will be able to calculate the thrust very accurately. But I wasn't running at 400 RPM. From my previous calculations I was able to calculate that my pro propeller was turning at 1060 RPM. That means I was actually running at a much higher Reynolds number than the set presented by this curve over here. Now what is the implication of that? Well let's have a look at the remaining wind tunnel test data. Now the folks at the University of Illinois were specifically interested in investigating the effect of changing Reynolds numbers on propeller performance. So they varied the RPM and the wind tunnel velocity to simulate different Reynolds numbers. The value that I used for my calculation is the top curve which is the 80,000 uh, Reynolds number and you can see how the efficiency falls off as the Reynolds number reduces to 40,000. Now anything between let's say 100,000 is considered very low when it comes to Reynolds numbers. Generally aircraft and large ship propellers operate with Reynolds numbers way into the millions, tens of millions. So 
what I want to point out here is the trend. You can clearly see how efficiency improves as Reynolds number picks up. I mentioned that I wasn't operating at 80,000 because my propeller wasn't operating at 400 RPM. It was running at 1,060 RPM. That gave me a Reynolds number of more than 200,000. So I can very confidently say that my actual maximum efficiency is significantly higher than this value over here. And that is also reflected in the fact that my motor drew less current than predicted by these curves. The only reason I wasn't using as much power is the fact that the propeller was in fact operating at an even higher efficiency than presented over here. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the aircraft propeller. Let's see how that now stacks up against proper marine propellers. That brings me to the Wageningen B-Series. This is a family of propellers that were tested and the data is widely published because it encompasses an incredibly large range of propellers. They present the test results as curves grouped in families and they group them by blade count and area ratio. So this is an example of a two blade with an area ratio of 0 0.3. This is two blade and an area ratio of 0.6. So this one has double the blade area but still only two blades. And then moving down to this, this is three blades with an area ratio of 0.3, area ratio of 0.6. I mentioned that there are four important things for a set of coefficients to be applicable. I've already mentioned blade count and area ratio and here you can see the family of curves that denote the different pitch to diameter ratios. So that's the third ratio that has to be kept constant. The last value that has to be kept constant for a certain set of coefficients to be applicable is the Reynolds number. All these values for the Wageningen series were published based on a Reynolds number of 2 million and as I've just demonstrated with that trend and also available from the publication you can calculate deviations from these results based on changes in Reynolds number. 2 million is the reference point so anything more than 2 million would give you improved results anything below 2 million and you actually have to reduce the efficiency. They also have a very useful website where you have an online tool that you can use to generate your own propeller geometries and that is exactly what I did. So I created these two propellers. There you can see the driving ratios right all together now. This curve is that of the small three blade marine propeller that is the eight inch marine propeller and that curve over there is the aircraft the model aircraft propeller and then just for good measure I also included the performance figures for a trolling motor with an assumed pitch to diameter ratio of 0.5 so something like an 8 by 4 that is a very typical size for a small electric trolling motor. The maximum efficiencies of these three propellers all seem very similar but that doesn't mean that they will perform equally at a given boat speed and thrust requirement and I've gone ahead and calculated the exact point on each curve where my kayak would have performed at six knots and requiring 65 Newton. My aircraft propeller placed right there and the large three blade placed there, the small three blade placed there and the trolling motor operated at that point over there. 
So you can see that maximum efficiency means nothing if your operating point does not coincide with maximum efficiency. I will leave that to a separate video to show you how to calculate the required size of the propeller, making sure that the maximum efficiency coincides with your boat's requirements. Now these are the published results obtained directly from the Wageningen uh, performance equations. In other words, this performance coincides with a propeller performing at a Reynolds number of 2 million, whereas the data for my aircraft propeller was the values obtained for a Reynolds number of 80,000. I've already shown that it's a very high likelihood of my propeller performing at a higher efficiency, and I was able to calculate the Reynolds numbers for these uh, three blade props and they weren't operating at 2 million this one was operating at 500,000 this one at 400,000 so both of them would have curves that are slightly worse performing than these over here so keep that in mind whenever you want to compare two propellers side by side if you have the test data you have to make sure that they represent the correct Reynolds numbers for your application. At this point it might look like I'm contradicting myself. Didn't I just say that an increase in Reynolds number will lead to an increase in efficiency and yet here I have a curve with actual test data at 80,000 and it outperforms marine propeller operating at 2 million. Clearly Reynolds number is not the only value driving efficiency. Let's have a look at area ratio, pitch to diameter ratio and blade count and see how they impact performance. Pitch to diameter ratio is pretty self-explanatory as is blade count. Expanded area ratio is the projected area of the blades once you've removed any twist and camber and then divide that area by the total swept area of the blades. A low expanded area ratio means slender blades and then as you add blade area your expanded area ratio will increase. If you keep expanded blade area constant and add more blades the width of each individual blade would have to decrease. If we take another look at the Wageningen series propellers to better see the comparison between area ratios and blade count, I've extracted two curves from each and superimposed them on top of one another. These four curves all have a pitch to diameter ratio of 1. This has a pitch to diameter ratio of 0.5. These two dark curves each have a blade count of 2. The gray curves each have three blades. Here you can see there's a very big jump as you increase area ratio for a two blade prop. The drop is less noticeable for a three blade prop. Also noticeable is the fact that for low area ratio, two blades is better than three. But at high area ratio, three blades is better than two. That same trend applies to the lower pitch to diameter ratio. To further simplify the trend, I've extracted the maximum efficiency of each of these and plotted the trend. These are the maximum efficiencies for two blade, three blade, four blade propellers at different area ratios. You can clearly see that there's a crossover point at an area ratio of around 0.5, above which it is better to use three blades or more. What I want to point out is that trend in efficiency as area ratio decreases. Now the Wageningen series has a minimum area ratio of 0.3. That doesn't mean that you can't reduce that any further. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to extrapolate the data and conclude that you can further increase efficiency by further reducing the area ratio. Model aircraft propellers such as these have area ratios in the vicinity of 0.1.
that is a very strong contributor to their high efficiency. As area ratio decreases, you do end up with conflicting trends in efficiency. Low area ratio means low blade cord. Low blade cord means low Reynolds numbers, which has a negative effect on efficiency. However, as you can see from the results, blade area ratio is obviously the stronger driver, as it more than makes up for any losses due to low Reynolds numbers. If you ask most people to point out the difference between a marine propeller and an aircraft propeller, I'm sure they will point out the total blade area and more specifically the blade cord to blade length. But if you look at the Wageningen series, they've tested propellers with blade area ratios as low as 0.3 and blade counts as high as 7. As I mentioned before, if you keep the blade area ratio the same but you add more blades then each blade width has to decrease. So I took a 6 blade Wageningen propeller with an area ratio of 0.3 which means each blade is one third the width of a 2 blade propeller of the same area ratio. I then simply removed two of the opposing blade pairs and I ended up with this. Now doesn't that look familiar?